It is. Oh gosh, what day is it? It's Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday, October 27th. And I'm Skip Murphy with Granite Rock, and I'm talking with Saul Anusis from the Michigan GOP. You are the chair. I was the chair. You no are longer the chair. Okay, but you are involved at the national level. And would you be willing to tell fairly quickly what uh, what your involvement is sure. at the national level for the Readers of Granite Rock? Sure. I, I uh, chair the Technology Committee for the Republican National Committee, and I'm also one of 15 members on the 2012 Rules Committee that will be setting the rules and the timing for the presidential primary in the next uh, for the 2012 cycle. Well, talk to me about the new GOP site because there have been some good things said about it and some, well, I think you said it right just a few minutes ago when you said it was a beta, although a lot of people took it as, this is a production system? Right. <laughs> well, look, this is a huge overhaul. This is probably one of the biggest projects the RNC has ever taken from a technology standpoint. We have put together not just a website, but a platform to allow people basically to get involved, uh, to allow local parties, state parties, uh, clubs, candidates, individuals to interact with one another. We've incorporated all the social media aspects of it, including allowing you to come there to, to post on Facebook, Twitter, uh, incorporate organizations, etc. to use this. Um, we launched the beta version about a week and a half ago. We expect for a month or so to work through a lot of the initial kind of hiccups and, and problems that normally happen in some kind of big launch like this. At the same time, it's going to be evolving. Uh, we had hundreds of people who were involved in giving us advice, uh, ideas, things that ought to be part of this. Uh, 7,000 people participated in our tech summit that actually asked what they thought we should do from a technology standpoint. And many of those ideas have been incorporated in one way or the other in this first beta launch site. Uh, so I will. I think what you will see is an evolving site uh, that is very uh, aggressive. It uh, tries to do a lot of things. We will continue to change it, improve it, make it better. It's not going to be perfect for everybody, but I think it's going to be one of the most powerful tools you're going to have out there in the political process. Okay. Are you looking to concentrate mostly on the social networking side, or are you going to have... Uh, an informational side where links galore to either uh, GOP leaning, uh, I, I don't want to say mechanisms, but other groups Absolutely. or uh, it's websites. It's going to be a little bit of everything. Or, uh, there will be a tremendous educational uh, venue to it. Uh, we are going to have a YouTube library. Uh, that candidates, parties, and anybody can get into. There will be philosophical areas. There will be how-to areas. There will be technology areas. Uh, there's interactivity using the concepts of Ning and others. So people can work together as work groups to develop other things. Uh, it is an open platform system uh, that, uh, that as uh, programmers and code writers are approved and made sure they really are Republicans, can go in there and help write code throw it into what Todd Herman, who is the director of the new media department, calls a sandbox and test it out and see how they can help Republicans. So very much like an iPhone idea. We've created the iPhone, we've created a platform, and we're looking for Republican activists to, you know, to submit applications to help us win elections. Okay, so when you say sandbox, the programmer side of me says, oh, so this is turning out to be open source? It is and open And when source. you talk about this being a platform, is it going to be your hosted platform, or is there a package that can be put together that can then be shipped out to smaller organizations and they can then host it on their own uh, They devices. can't host it on their own. They have to host it through us because obviously we want to protect the integrity of both the system and how it's designed. So if we shipped it out and it never got out, obviously you know it would allow for a lot of mischief. But any organization can plug into it and use almost all the features that are available to them. So a state party can host their own website taking advantage of all the applications that are on there through the RNC. And the RNC is paying for that hosting so they don't have to do it. A county club a city club, uh, a campaign can take advantage of that. So there's a lot of tools that are growing, and you'll see every single day you're going to see candidates getting on there. We're working with individual parties and others to throw out the first site, to do the first beta on how a club would work, how a candidate would work. I just got an invite today from the uh, Marco Rubio campaign out of Florida asking to join their group you know, on the GOP.com site. It'll be an example of what's available to us, and, and hopefully people here in New Hampshire will take advantage of it as well. Okay. Um, you brought up Marco Rubio, and let me jump off to a totally different area, if you don't mind. There's obviously the difference of opinion between the NRSC, who is supporting uh, Chris, and the conservatives that are more behind, uh, and the, at a national level, Mark Rubio, for a lot of obvious reasons. And we're seeing that really pinpointed right now in New York 23. And I've written extensively on, well, not extensively, but in the past few days, quite a bit about that race. 
and it seems like the the GOP tent is is extending out to the moderates, and certainly this is an extreme example where the party chairs in New York nominated somebody that's very very liberal, you know, voting more Democrat than Republican, versus the more conservative person, Doug Hoffman, who has had to go to the conservative party. What do you think of the uh, the brouhaha that it's generated within the party from the conservatives and the liberals and how people are actually responding to that? Well, look, I think it's a mixed bag. I mean, I, I made the comment that I think the New York Republican Party made a mistake. Uh, I was quoted yesterday in the Hill newspaper talking about the fact that the Republicans nominated somebody out of the mainstream. I mean, this wasn't a candidate who had a disagreement on one or two major issues. This was a candidate who had a disagreement on almost all the fundamental issues that define a conservative or Republican as a Republican. Now, the, the other side of the coin is the local parties, three, you know, three communities, three executive committees, voted for her, and she won first in all three of those polls in, on their executive committees. For right or for wrong, the local parties made that decision. I may have disagreed with it, you may disagree with it, but that's the challenge we have. So are we to usurp local control? Uh, are we to make a judgment call with respect to what they did was right, wrong, or different? I don't know. I think it was a mistake. But that's the quandary we're in. Um, I think that we have to be, look, we are a center-right party. The way we're going to win elections is by a coalition. Now, I don't think she represents almost any part of our coalition, and therefore I will again say I believe it was a mistake, and it is not in our best interest to have a candidate like that, because I do think it helps hurts the brand uh, of who we are and who we want to be. Um, and so that's that's the challenge. And that's why you have national leaders coming out opposing her, other national leaders coming out in favor of her, and they're taking different positions. And, you know, it's, just, it's not a black and white issue. I mean, he actually ran, and I believe the best he came into any of the three communities was in third place in one of the communities. The others he came in fourth. So, again, taking a look at where the party is and what they want to do, that, that's something we have to deal with. Okay. Now, let me segue just a little bit to the, to the side on that. Granite Rock is a founding member, one of the co-founding members of the New Hampshire Tea Party Coalition. Now, I'm not speaking for the Tea Party Coalition with a question, but as a conservative that is just to the left of Attila the Hun, uh, but also active in the Tea Party organization, I'm looking at the Tea Party folks in New York who are very active going, this is a slap in the face from the GOP. Here you have lots of conservatives who are fired up, willing to put boots on the ground, maybe not as much money as, quote-unquote, the country clubbers, but certainly willing to do the grunt work, and they've basically been told, go take a hike by the Republican <laughs> Party officials in New York. How do you bridge that gap again? Well, I, I think, first of all, as you said, look, the Tea Party movement is not partisan. I mean, they're not looking to be Republicans or Democrats. They're conservatives, people who are fed up with the system and have to be part of it. So... One, they have a responsibility to get involved if they want to affect it. They can't expect people to just kind of, you know, say, okay, what does the Tea Party think and let's make sure we represent their views. They are going to be part of a coalition, in most cases, part of a center-right coalition. So, you know, I don't think there's an easy way to do that. I mean, the, be the best way for the Tea Party folks to do things is to get involved in the Republican Party and help affect the change within the party. Therefore, they can then affect who the parties nominate. Now, you know, I believe in most cases, if you take a look at prior primaries and conventions that are held around the country, mostly conservatives get nominated. But there are places where moderates or even liberals or even people who may, many will consider even not Republicans get nominated. And I think in this case, and I don't know all the details, I don't know why it happened, but three communities voted to nominate somebody who I believe is out of the mainstream of the Republican Party. Well, is, so it really, is it really communities or three chairs? Because they're the ones know. in New York that make the decision. My, understand, my understanding is that there was a vote in all three executive committees. She won okay. first place on all three, and then the okay. chairs voted for the person who won first place. That's what I understand. I may be wrong, but that's what my understanding is. Okay. Um, now, if it was a primary... The Tea Party people and others could have gotten involved and voted for somebody who was more conservative. And I think that's a very big part of this problem where there was no primary. A special election. That's part of the issue as well. I mean, I think normally there is a primary. New York also has a unique system where a candidate can be nominated in multiple parties and win. Uh, you know, William M. Buckley won as a nominee of the Conservative Party, and you had the Libertarians, the Conservatives, the Right to Lifers, and the Republicans all nominate Buckley, combined the votes, and he actually won the general election that way. Correct. Um, 
you know, personally, I'm a big fan of the, uh, of the New York system because I think it allows people to be much more representative. I would love to have a tea party, literally a tea party in every state, but that was part of a system like New York has that would be much more reflective. And you get that when you have right to life voters, libertarian voters, uh, pro gun voters, individual rights voters, wherever they come from. So that's, you know, I mean, but that's a, that's a much bigger question and a much bigger challenge. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for your time, and I know that you've got places to go and time is short, but thanks for coming to New Hampshire. Glad to be with you. And thanks for helping keep us number one for the primary. (laughs) Well, we're looking forward to it. I hope we're going to nominate a good conservative Republican next time around. Well, thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.